Here's our Master of Ceremonies, Rob Gaylard. Yes, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon and welcome once again. A thrilling finish to the Amy Derby and it uh, gives me great pleasure to ask Mrs. Uh, Linda Keane, the wife, of course, of the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Amy, Mr. Brian Keane, to present the uh, winning sash to the owners. Linda, thank you very much. While she's doing that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the VRC, Mr. Andrew Ramston. Uh, Governor of Victoria, John Landy and Mrs. Landy, Honourable Rob Hulls, Minister for Racing, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor, Councillor John So, and Lady Mayoress, Ms. Wendy Cheng, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Flemington on Amy Victoria Derby Day. We believe it is the greatest classic race day on the Australian Canada. Three Group 1s, three Group 2s, and three Group 3s. What a magnificent race we've all just watched. Congratulations. What a fabulous win by Amalfi. What a great ride by our champion jockey, Damien Oliver. Amalfi now joins an illustrious list of three-year-olds to win our classic race. Victoria Derby, the oldest classic race in Victoria, indeed older than the Melbourne Cup, is steeped in history and tradition. For 10 years now, Amy, sponsors of the Derby have been and continue to be wonderful sponsors of the VRC. Amy's involvement with racing began at Flemington at Victoria Derby in 1992 and has now extended to a number of other Group 1 races throughout Australia. Amy is the leader in its field, an innovative company with a progressive image and an, and an enviable record of growth and stability and a dedication to its customers perfect match with the VRC. I'm proud of the close association between the VRC and Amy, which has been created largely through the drive and enthusiasm of Mr Brian Keane, Chief Executive Officer of Amy. I sincerely thank Brian, his wife Linda and Amy for their continued support and enthusiasm for Thoroughbred Racing Victoria in general and particularly the VRC. I'm now pleased to introduce and welcome to Brian Keane, Chief Executive Officer, Amy. Thank you, Chairman. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at Amy, it's both a privilege and a pleasure to be associated with the VRC in the presentation of Derby Day. Simply the best race day and the best race course anywhere. Today marks a decade of Amy's association with the Derby, still rich in history and tradition, maintained by the VRC in this outstanding style we see today. I want to congratulate you, Chairman, the VRC, the committee and the staff, the way it's been presented, and wish you well for the remainder of the carnival. To win the Derby must be surely every owner's dream. And today we've seen an outstanding win by the Queensland Connection. And it gives me very great pleasure on behalf of everybody at Amy to congratulate the owners of Amalfi, Ron and Judy Wanless, and to ask Ron Wanless to accept the Amy Victoria Derby Trophy. I'm not going to read too many notes, but I think I'm going to read the gentleman's but <clears throat> Mr. Arthur Ramson, Chairman of the VRC, Mr. Brian Keane, Chairman of the Amy. I'd like to see Brian here and Amy sponsoring because two weeks ago they were sponsoring the Northern Robinson and the Ralphie won it and uh, thanks very much. I'm, when, when's the next one you're sponsoring, Brian? <laughs> uh, and ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple of uh, people I'd like to thank. First of all, I'd like to thank my trainer, Peter Moody. He uh, told us three months ago that he was going to set the horse for the Derby. And I, uh, I said, OK, Peter, well, whatever you think. And about a month ago, I said, how are you going? He said, mate, he said, I don't care what the track's like. It could be soft or fast. But he said, uh, you give me two things and I'll win it for you. I said, what's that? He said, give me a sound horse and Damien Oliver. And so he had, he had both that. So uh, thanks very much, Peter. And, and it's a pleasure for me to win... Uh, the first Group 2 race Peter's ever won. He's only been training for himself three years. He's been in the industry since he was five. <laughs> but, uh, 
uh, he won the first Group 2 race on my horse, and, and that was our first Group 2 race, and, um, and now we've won a, a Group 1, and Peter's won his first Group 1, so uh, congratulations, Peter. I'm sure you're going to be a great, well, you're right now, but you're going to be a super trainer. Thank you very much. I'd like to also uh, thank Damien Oliver. I don't have to stand here and tell you too much about Damien Oliver. I think you know him a lot more than I do, but I reckon Australian jockeys are the best in the world. Australian New Zealand jockeys are the best in the world for all your Kiwis there. But um, if that's a fact, then Damien Oliver is without doubt the greatest jockey in the world. Thank you very much, Damien. And last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, Karen Moore, because uh, Karen took me into buying this horse. He's my bloodstock agent. I don't buy any horses without uh, Karen looking at them and studying them and whatever. He knows a lot more about breeding and horses than I'll ever know. But uh, he took a lot to talk me into this horse because as you look at him, he's only 15 and a half hands high. He's only the smallest horse in the field. And uh, matter of fact, Peter was getting his photo taken yesterday and he said, look, take it with, this, with one of the stable girls. He said, he said, I'll make him look like a dwarf. And, um, but anyway, he, um, he's got a big heart. He's a great horse and, uh, and um, that's it. But Kieran Moore, is, uh, I'd like to thank you and Debbie. He didn't, that's what I said, Kieran had to talk me into him because he's only 15 hands high, I like buying big horses. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you congratulate and welcome the trainer, Peter Moody. Distinguished guests, Mr. Ramsey, ERC committee, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've got too many people to thank for being here today. I've had a lot of people help me along the way, and if I forget you, please forgive me. Ron and Judy Wanless, thanks very much for your support. You sought me out a couple of years ago. We've had good success. It culminated with a great derby today, and hopefully it can grow on to a lot more for us. Thank you. Kieran Moore. Ron's bloodstock agent. Thanks very much. He's the man who's purchased this horse and found it, and uh, one of the many behind the scenes men. Uh, does a great job, produced a derby winner, and uh, I'm sure he'll find us a few more down the track. I'd like to thank my staff, not only here in Melbourne, but also in Queensland. Dale Turgeon, who's here with the tour horse today. Uh, not only does he strap the horse, he's the foreman of the Melbourne stable. Uh, he's done a great job in helping us settle into Victoria and uh, he deserves a lot of the credit for the victory. Bruce Deacon and my Queensland staff have done a great job. They put the foundation into this horse and uh, sent him down to Melbourne in great shape. Uh, I'd like to thank my family. Uh, I haven't been very bearable the last couple of weeks. My wife Sarah and my daughter's home in Queensland that they wouldn't even come down with me today, that was that cranky. My mum, Jan, she's here with me today, my biggest supporter. Thanks very much, Mum. Last but not, not least, uh, just reiterating what Ron said, I don't have to tell you what a great jockey Damien Oliver is. Uh, our friendship goes back a long way to when uh, I was scrapping horses down here a good 10 or 15 years ago and he'd just come over from uh, Western Australia and I couldn't uh, think of a more fitting rider to be beside me when I trained the first group one winner. Thanks very much, Damien. Thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, good on you, Peter. Uh, there's some terrific people in racing, and uh, Brian Keane and Amy there. He's a great bloke, Brian Keane, and they've been terrific supporters in uh, a time when sponsorship money in sport in general is hard to come by. As we take a break, have a look at the fella in the blue colours. Goodness me, he can ride. If you're an omen punter, Stick with D. Oliver. We'll take a break. There they are, those responsible for Amalfi, trainer Pete Moody, the Wanless family, Mr. and Mrs. Wanless, and D. Oliver, just having their happy snaps taken on this magnificent day of racing at Flemington. Amy Victoria Derby Day 2001. And they just keep coming. The next is the Thrifty McKinnon. I tell you, the bookies are giggling all over the race course at the moment. Can you pick a winner here? I can't. Let's have a look at the contenders for the McKinnon. The middle pen of our Group 1 treble at Flemington today, the Thrifty McKinnon States, has always been not only a quality race, but often a great guide to the Melbourne Cup. 
And today, the ruling cup favourite, Universal Prince, will be out to silence some of the doubters. His run in the Cox Plate was below par, but trainer and jockey, Bede Murray and Justin Sheehan, have said all along that the cup is his mission. Today may very well tell the tale. Seven of his opposition this afternoon are also cup bound. Horses like Karpstad Way, last year's beaten Melbourne Cup favourite. He and Nashra Willer are due for a change of luck. Freemason started third pick and ran sixth in the big one last year, and the partnership between John Hawkes and Darren Gauchy has already tasted Group 1 success this spring. Lee Friedman has high hopes for Cranman Cup winner Bush Padre, while Kiwi Mayor Hill of Grace, with Corey Brown aboard, ran an outstanding fourth in the Caulfield Cup. Dean Lawson will be looking for his cup contender Rum to be getting home hard, while the new connections of Inner Flurry will have their fingers crossed for a different outcome to a controversial Caulfield Cup sixth. Stephen Arnold replaces Jim Cassidy in the saddle. She's one of three here for young trainer Cliff Brown, the others being Citrus Prince and this bloke, talented five-year-old Emission. Oh, and don't forget Matriculate. The form may not be the best, but she's trained by a bloke called Cummings, and he knows a thing or two about this race. He's won it eight times. It's weight for age at a good horse's distance, and it's worth half a million dollars. The thrifty McKinnon Stakes is getting closer. Now, if you can find a winner there, you're a better man than I am. I've forgiven Universal Prince. I like Universal Prince. If that means anything, I'm going no good, but most are not having a good day here. The, the uh, bookies certainly are, though. Sandra Sully, I think you've had enough of a break, and you've got one of my favourite Aussie singers with you. I don't know about enough of a break, Tim Webster, but yes, you're right. We do have one of all of our favourite Aussie singers with us. Of course, the delightful Tina Arena, Australia's hottest-selling artist, and of course, just releasing your third album yeah. and this wonderful new uh, Soulmate Number no. Nine. Yeah. All of that aside, though, we're here to enjoy the races, and you've had a great day, have you? I've had a fantastic day. Actually, this is my very first time at the races, and I've got to say, Melbourne has turned out a fine day for us. It's been great. I've had a great day. But you're a Melbourne girl. First I know. Time. I'm, I know I'm Melbourne girl, but this is the first time for me. I don't know why. I've never really had a great interest. But this year, something's kind of happened. Good, yep. good excuse to get dressed up, too. We, we, we girls don't mind that. No, Have you had a bit don't. of a flutter? I, no, I haven't had a flutter at all, because I don't know anything about the horses. I don't know what's going on. So I kind of thought, when in doubt, leave it out. Well, look, as long <laughs> as you're having a wonderful day, oh, it's yeah. as much a day for, you know, socialising, fun, glamour and fashion as it is for racing. Mm -hmm. So everyone comes for all their own various reasons. It's great that you could join us today. Well, it's great to be here. I'm having a wonderful and time. And we're so enjoying you back in Australia. Good luck with the album and, Thank of course, you. the single. And uh, we look forward to seeing so much more of you in the years to come. Thank but you, we, Sam. But we hope to see a little bit more of you in the Spring Racing Carnival, given you're a local gal. Oh, I'll, I'll be around, I think. Any excuse to get dressed up, I'm there. Exactly. Yeah. There you go, Tim. Two girls who love a good frog. Yeah. Oh, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. Isn't she fantastic, Tina Arena? She's just terrific. Look at the two of them. They're bubbles, Sully, I can see in front of you. Hide the glass. Go away, go away. Yeah, yeah, exactly, I go away. We'll take a break from the Amy Victoria Derby of 2001. See you in a minute. Well, I guess when in doubt, you're sitting in the sun, beautiful day, Flemington race course. Glass of champagne. Yes, girls, I know, plenty of that goes on. It's just fantastic. Peter Donegan usually gets the crowd figure first, but I've been coming here a while, and I can tell you, I don't think I've seen a bigger Derby Day crowd, and last year we went well over the 300,000 for the four days of the Melbourne Cup Carnival. It's just fantastic. Look at that. The crowd here just having a ball, and it's a beautiful day, temperature in the mid-20s and some of the greatest horse racing you will see anywhere in the world. And I tell you what, hen's teeth, Peter Donegan, are harder to pick than winners today. Exactly. You were talking about the champagne before, Tim, and it's a nice idea, but we can't afford any at the moment. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's been terrible to try and find a winner, but, you know, there is three more races to go, so always, we might be able to. Always the optimist, don't we? Have to be. Have and to. we've <laughs> had a look at these great horses in the yard for the thrifty McKinnon Stakes. Here's number one, Freemason. We're putting him in. He's big odds. Darren Gauchy is the rider for John Hall. And his win in the Herbert Power was really good, and then things didn't go his way in the Caulfield Cup, Jim. Yes, he ran 
fourth, fourth in this race last year, Peter. Um, I think I'd like to see what he does here today and uh, watch him for Tuesday. Now, number two, Carpstad Way. We mentioned the fact that this horse needs the track exactly as it is today. He's going to improve, no question. Nash Ruilla, the rider for Chris Wood. Yes, he ran second in the Caulfield Cup. He's run fourth in the Melbourne Cup. He's a classy stayer on the dry, and the dry only. And he gets that here today, so he does get his chance. But an interesting point about him, he's yet to win a group or a listed race. Yeah. There's number four, and that is a mission. One of Cliff Brown's three runners in the race, and this fellow's a definite contender, Brett Prebelaboy. He was unlucky. He couldn't really get a run at his last start in the Tour Rock Handicap at Caulfield. He's another horse that really thrives on the drier surface, and he's got that as well. I just query whether or not he's quite up to wait for age, but uh, maybe a place chance. There's the Melbourne Cup favourite, number six Universal Prince, Justin Sheehan, the rider for Bede Murray. How important is this race to gauge how he's going for Tuesday? Oh, it's extremely important, Peter, because his last run we're all worried about that after yeah. the Cox Plate performance, but uh, he's a very classy galloper. His form before the Cox, Cox Plate was absolutely fantastic, so I'm willing to give him another chance. He looks well enough, and he's a chance. Didn't mind the run of Bush Padre in the Caulfield Cup, Jen. I thought he might have been flying a bit high, but he acquitted himself well. Damien Oliver, well, he's already won the derby. And, of course, he won the Cranbourne Cup the start before yeah. that. So he's a horse that is always thereabouts. He's a handy type of stayer. I'd prefer a little bit of give in the ground for him, though, Pete. Another good run in the Caulfield Cup, as we discussed earlier in the day was from this girl, number nine, Hill of Grace, the five-year-old mare to be ridden by Corey Brown for trainer Robert Prisco. She ran sixth in this last year and I think she's going a, a fair bit better than she was last year, Peter. Uh, I think on a Caulfield Cup run you've got to give her some sort of chance. She's nice and relaxed and she looks well. Now, if you fancy in a flurry number 10, you're going to have to get used to a different set of colours. This horse normally races in the colours that you see at the moment, but those colours have been changed because the horse has been sold and the the jockey will carry Lloyd Williams colours of navy blue, white armbands and cap. Important to note here that Stephen Arnold goes back on in a flurry. Now, he's had eight rides for three wins and a few placings on this horse, so very good record and seems to handle her well. What did you make of the Kiwis' appearance, Cinderella, Jen? Oh, look, I saw her win about two starts ago, Pete, in the Celt Stakes in New Zealand, and that was outstanding. Came from absolute last and charged the line. Uh, she's a very good mare. I'd respect her for sure. She looked pretty fit in the mounting yard too, but there aren't uh, too many of them that didn't look fit at this time of the year. They all look spectacular. Here are the tote figures for race number seven as they head to the gates for the thrifty McKinnon Stakes. Dan Maliki. $26 for Free Mason. $5.50 Carpstead Way. Shopping a little bit better. Queensland and New South Wales. $22 Citrus Prince. $11 Emission. $82 Merlin's Law the Grey. $4 Universal Prince. $10 Bush Padre. $47 for Rum. And then to number nine, Hill of Grace at $9.30 in a flurry. $7.90. $8.30 Cinderella, the New Zealand Mayor. Matriculate 32, 44 La Bella Dama and 37 Tyrolee and all the mares on that second page. So Universal Prince at around the $4 on the tote. Well, that's better odds than what he was to win the Melbourne Cup about uh, a week ago. Goss. Yes, yeah, certainly was, Dan. I can tell you now that they're coming for Universal Prince to win the McKinnon Stakes right now. It was a notable drifter. In fact, for the first 25 minutes of betting, everything drifted alarmingly in the market, including Universal Prince. But now they've come for it and they've earmarked it as a clear-cut favourite. As you mentioned, 390 on the tote, almost getting a little bit short shorter than that in the ring. And I can tell you that Carpstad Way has been the only other runner back to beat it, and Bush Padre has been kept safe. But good money for Universal Prince, Pete. And not surprisingly that there has been money for that horse you mentioned, Carpstad Way, with the state of the track, Tim. There's the map for the thrifty McKinnon Stakes. Again, 2,000 metres, as was the case with the Qantas Wakeful Stakes a little bit earlier in the day. And they will run to the first turn after about 600 metres. There are the selections. I've gone for Cinderella, Universal Prince from Jennifer and Gary, Karpstad Way from Dan Malicki, Universal Prince from Simon Marshall, a mission from John Litz. So once again, a diversity of opinion here. Here's a bloke who might even add to that, Roy Higgins. <laughs> In a certain way, I will. I don't, what really with this, uh, with the McKinnon here, everything revolves around Universal Prince. If he performs as he did in the Cox Plate, that, he ran like a very flat horse there. Yeah. He didn't sort of catch the eye at all, anywhere at all in the run. If that's on again, he's in trouble for the Melbourne Cup, and probably they may even consider whether he runs. I've actually, because of that, I've put Capstad Way on top. This horse is the best he's looked this whole preparation. Yeah. He's been set for a Melbourne Cup. 
but he's been waiting for a track like that and today he's got it. I think you'll see a big run from him today. But on the other hand, if Universal Prince is on his game, he will beat them. I've marked him second out of the yard because of that factor. He's such a good horse, yet to win here in Victoria. He's never won a race in Victoria. He's been placed in plenty. He's a magnificent looking animal. You could eat your lunch off his coat as that smooth and silky. I couldn't fold him in the yard. He looked outstanding. But because of the run in the Cox Plate, I left that question mark there. Certainly putting in a flurry in. She can fuzz up a bit, as we noted in the Caulfield Cup. The 2000 here at Flemington, hopefully she'll drop back and learn to relax all over again. If she does, she'll be very competitive. And her stable mate looked well here today. Number four, Emission. He paraded very well in the yard. He's there with a the hope. I marked him 2 6. 10 and 4, Pete. And we've had a good look at rum number 8 on the way to the barrier. <laughs> Isn't he a huge animal? He's a monster and he's got a head to fit him. He's, uh, I once said on television that he's got a head like a seagoing tadpole. And everyone <laughs> asked me what a seagoing tadpole looked like. But uh, he's a great big raw horse. He was like that really as a late two-year-old and uh, everyone shook their heads. But he's a horse with great staying ability. OK, thanks to Roy Higgins, courtesy of Sport 927. Late minute update from the betting ring, Tim Gossage. Serious plunge now, Pete. We use that word very sp sparingly, but I can tell you a serious plunge on Universal Prince. Its price is tumbling with every second before they jump here in the McKinnon Stakes. Maybe they're trying to cash up before the two is new Melbourne Cup here on Tuesday. Universal Prince, the reigning favourite at the moment, but there have been a few question marks placed over him since that Cox Plate run. Will today dispel the doubts and silence the knockers? We're about to find out as they fill the gates. There is that big horse run for Dean Lawson going into the gates prior to the start of this time-honoured event, the 133rd running of the thrifty McKinnon Stakes. Let's get the last-minute thoughts of Gary Willett, who's up in the commentary box with Dan Maliki. Yes, Peter, look, I'm going to stay with Universal Prince. I thought his coat looked magnificent when he was walking around here. I marked him on top from a two-cap stab way. And I thought he looked race looked very well. And for the other one I was going to throw in Cinderella. But gee, uh, what about Damien Oliver with that uh, last minute of the way he puts that stick away and puts those hands up behind the horse's head and gets them there. Just tremendous, Dan. Yeah, and that's a great cause for the people that don't really like to see horses whipped either. Oh, last one coming up. Uh, a lot of the jockeys uh, are doing that nowadays, aren't they? Now they're close to a start, the thrifty McKinnon Stakes, Group 1. Is the Melbourne Cup winner in here? Is it Universal Prince? Does he deserve to start favourite on Tuesday? We're about to find out. Racing. Cinderbella a little bit slow. Citrus Prince flips back and Universal Prince is back last with Freemason. La Bella Dama jumped in front of Bush Padre. Tyrolene matriculate pushing up near the rails. And Hill of Grace was handy as well. Then came a mission up to about sixth and then Cinderbella. About midfield carps that way but he's wide at the moment around Brahman in a flurry. Then Merlin's Law the Grey from Citrus Prince. Three lengths away Freemason and Sheen sticking to his usual tactics. He's three lengths away last on Universal Universal Prince about 15 to wait in off the lead, but that's his usual pattern. About 1,500 metres to travel. And the leader, La Bella Dama, two lengths in front of Bush Padre and Matriculate getting the run of the race third. Two lengths away, fourth Hill of Grace and Tyrolene on its inside. Three lengths away, a mission. Another two to Cinderbella, a half to Carpstad Way. Then Rum on the outside of Inner Flurry. One and a half to Citrus Prince, a half to Merlin's Law. Four lengths away, Freemason. And five lengths away, Universal Prince. And he's about 18 to 20 lengths off the lead. A thousand metres to travel. La Bella Dama in front, Bush Padre a length away second, matriculate third, and then Hill of Grace and Tyrolene. One and a half to a mission who's had a nice run. Two lengths to Cinderbella who's racing seventh on the inside of Carpstad Way. Another two lengths to Rum and in a flurry. Two lengths to Merlin's Law. Inside of it, Citrus Prince. Two lengths to Freemason and five away Universal Prince. He's 20 lengths off the lead with 600 left to travel. La Bella Dama's in front rounding the turn. Half a length to Bush Padre. One and a half to matriculate and Hill of race. Carps that way is creeping into the race now from Cinderbella and then came a mission hooked out from Tyrolene. Universal Prince is 15 off the lead. The bolts are La Bella Dama led Bush Padre. Hill of Grace giving chase and a mission joining in. Then Matriculate followed by Carps that way and then Cinderbella. La Bella Dama's in front of Hill of Grace and a mission from Cinderbella. La Bella Dama of the 200 led a length to a mission still coming. The bolts are La Bella Dama in front of a mission. Still La Bella Dama from a mission. La Bella Bella Dama's going to lead all the way. La Bella Dama's beaten Hill of Grace into mission. Then Cinderbella run. Next time matriculate from Bush Padre in a flurry. Carpstad way, Tyrolene. Universal Prince. He will not be cup favourite on that. There's no 
doubt about that. And then came Freemason Merlin's Law and uh, Citrus Prince dropped out of it. Well, Scott Seymour, La Bella Daba, Graham Rogerson trained, won at Mini Valley the other day, and she's led all the way here, Dan. And I really can't make an excuse for any horse and Universal Prince, well, I would. I don't know whether I'd go on with a cup uh, start for him. Look, he, he might have might made a few lengths up, but he went to the rails, and that's his usual pattern. I think it's a good enough guide. Today's racing has been for horses up on the speed. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Hill of Grace will get second, 14, 9, and 4 are the numbers, and fourth in number 11. Probably a McKinnon down on the usual quality and class. Yeah. Every more of a reason why Universal Prince should have got closer. Massive question mark there now, Gary. Yeah, and uh, like this track's pretty firm whether... Uh, I, I don't know, like I, I knew he'd get back, but I, I would have liked to have seen him run home real quick. La Bella 46, 10 and 12, 20. Pizza upsets in all shapes and forms, and it opens more than one can of worms. Surely one of the most remarkable McKinnon stakes days and derby days we've had for a long time. There's La Bella Dama in front coming around the home turn. Hill of Grace is the mare about to run home into second spot. But the interesting one and the horse to look at is this horse back here. That yeah. is him, Universal Prince. And Gary, I had a fairly close look at him coming down the straight and he really didn't make up too much ground at all. No, like uh, when you've ridden a horse quite like that, Peter, that horse should have really got home very fast the last little bit. But uh, to me, he's just battled home and uh, I was very disappointed with his run. You know, like you can see him still here like you know he's struggling to get past these horses here he's given him a few with the whip to try and get him to go but he's to me he's just worked home very ordinarily really and uh, like you look he hasn't really made up a lot of ground at all look at this horse rum getting home he yep. ran a nice race at the end of the race he ran home pretty well yeah there was a few, I even thought Cap Sap Way should have yes. ran over a little bit better than what he did. Yeah. And, and guys, I'll add to the equation, Hill of Grace has never been a sort of horse that's, I think she's had too many excuses, but I think of all the cup trials this time in, she's going as well as ever if she's going to get the two miles. Yeah, she certainly looks well. Well, there is the Caulfield Cup winning jockey, Scotty Seymour, after taking out the thrifty McKinnon Stakes aboard La Bella Dama, and here he is with Johnny Lentz. Yes, Pete and, and Scotty Seymour were just saying to Scotty, I said, how did you feel when you come down here a month ago? He said, well, I didn't think I'd be going home with the, the uh, thrifty McKinnon Stakes and the uh, Caulfield Cup, and uh, here he is, he's won both of them, both group ones, and uh, what a great ride in front of us, Scotty. Did you, your plans before the race? Yeah, that was the plan, there wasn't much pace in the race, and uh, if they let me lead doing 14s, so I'll take it any day. You know, at Wait Parade, you, uh, you must have been feeling, where are those, where are they going to come at me? No, it was going to be a sprint home. I thought um, Freemason might took on from the sort of 1,000 metres and match me, but he was a fair way back, so they said. So, no, the idea was just to lead if I could, just doing evens and um, sprint home, and nothing from behind could beat me. And nothing took it up to you, did they? No, they left me there, and I was quite happy to sit there. So you went even time and home the last couple? Home the last three, that was all. Congratulations, mate. Thanks Great very ride. much. John Letts with the winning rider, Scott Seymour. Here's the winning trainer, Graham Rogerson, just watching the replay on the big screen. Well, amazing results today. She's paid more than $40. Did you go in with any degree of confidence? I said to Scott Seymour, I think she'll win. Really? You know, what you did know, you say to us, Graham? Well, you know, we're sectionals. They left her alone, and I mean, I don't know what she'd come home in, but she's just been going enormous, the horse. And, uh, you know, it's just a pity. I mean, Frankie Dettori was on it, and Frankie couldn't get the plane, so then Scott got the ride. So uh, my secretary in New Zealand liked his ride on Ethel. That's how he got the ride on it. Really? Well, she was impressive last week at Mooney Valley, but you were meeting some pretty hot opposition today. Oh, she runs up to Goose Company. You know, she's uh, just had a little, few little things go wrong in Sydney and no luck. But she's just uh, she's been going enormous down here. You know, I put even Darren Gauchy. Garen would have liked to have ridden her, but he said he had to ride his couples, which is fair enough, you know. What now for her, Graham? I might back her up in the Emirates the last day. Okay. I'll just see. All right. Maybe we'll see you in a week's time. OK. Yeah, OK. Graham Rogerson, the trainer of La Bella Dama. Another upset here on Amy Victoria Derby Day. And the bookmakers just keep on smiling. And the punters keep on searching for the wallet to see if there's anything else in there.